we're starting, uh, this is part two of a 30 part series. Uh, uh, well, it could be the rest of our life. Because the ministry of the Spirit should never cease in our life. Uh, and the more we know about it, the more we can yield and, and freely allow the, the, the Holy Spirit who, who now lives in us to begin to continue that ministry in our life, in our heart, and through us as well. Uh, I want to say greetings to everybody that's watching. I'm seeing some things pop up already there, mm -hmm. so we're glad that you're with us. I hope you can Amen. download the notes and follow along with There's one part of the notes that you won't have today, but we'll find a way from and maybe you can get them up for us this afternoon. Um, turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 16 today. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Uh, I really do feel like that, that this is going to probably be one of, maybe one of the longer series that I've done because the more I, I think I'm getting a handle on, on putting this together, the more I realize that this is, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on here. And there's a lot happening uh, as, we, as we have established a foundation in the gospel of grace, as we, as we have established a foundation on which the Holy Spirit can now direct us in a better, a better way. I think the action of the Holy Spirit is, in our lives is going to become more clear uh, and more vibrant. I know, and like I said this week, I've, been, uh, I've not been praying as much in the last few years as I, as I have, and I think that's because I've had some confusion as to uh, uh, the foundation on which we were praying and, and trying to have things happen, trying to make things happen instead of letting them happen. And there's a big difference. You know, uh, We don't have to necessarily stir up an anointing for the Holy Spirit. We just need to preach according to what Paul said in Galatians. Uh, does the Holy Spirit do things among you by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Faith is faith is a is what what is the definition of faith? It's an acknowledgement of the truth concerning Jesus and what He's done to make us who we are today. So in in Romans chapter sixteen it says, "Now to Him who is able to establish you according to what my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ." So uh, the the gospel that Paul preached, the preaching of Jesus Christ, is what is what He does to establish us. When we hear about Jesus, when we hear the preaching of Jesus, the Holy Spirit uh, is establishing us mm -hmm. uh, according to the revelation of the mystery. Uh, what is the mystery according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 27? Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the, what, again, the, we have, a, we have a, a, a better hope now, a living hope. Of what Elaine said earlier, hope has a name, Jesus. Joy has a name, Jesus. Righteousness has a name, Jesus. So there, there, we have a living hope uh, by the name of Jesus, who uh, is that, and this, this hope we have, this mystery, is now Christ actually lives in, inside us. He lives inside us. Uh, so according to this, revelation brings what? Revelation, uh, based upon what, what Paul says here, brings transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the more we preach Jesus Christ, the more we preach the gospel, that, that revelation begins to cause us to be transformed into the same image as Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, that's, where, that's, what we're, that's where we're going with this, is the transformation, this happens on the inside of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't happen apart from preaching Jesus Christ. If I'm preaching about you, you can change a little bit about your behavior, but, you're, but you can't be transformed. There's no transformation going on. You can, you can learn 10 steps on how to be a better person uh, or whatever, 10 steps to whatever, uh, but that, those things that are done in our, with our mind uh, will not develop the transformation in our, that, that's already happened in our spirit. And we'll, we'll see this a little bit more clearly in just a moment. Uh, 
In Ephesians chapter 3, look at that for just a minute. Just flip over to Ephesians chapter 3. Galatians, Ephesians. Paul says these amazing things over and over and over again. And when you really have the foundation of the gospel, the Holy Spirit starts making these things pop. Everywhere you read in the scripture now, you're seeing Jesus because you're no longer looking for you and what you need to do. You're looking for Jesus and what he's done for you. Uh, now, reading the word becomes a joy rather than uh, something that makes us uh, have a struggle uh, because we think it's about us. It, it, Paul says this, uh, back up to 19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God like what Donna was saying. Drink all of it. Let's drink it. That cup of salvation contains it, contains it all. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by, G by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, according to Paul, who is able? He is able. He is able. The Holy Spirit is able. Uh, like Pat said, it's when we come to the end of ourself and our ability that the Holy Spirit steps in with his ability. Amen? Uh, so, uh, by, by what means? What, the power that's working in us. We're not trying to get some power from a different source, we're trying to call on a power that he's given us within because when the Holy Spirit uh, came into our life, came in and, and, and actually is, is contained in this vessel, this jar of clay, he didn't leave all the stuff he can do outside on the, out, on the doorstep of our life. He brought it all in with him to minister <coughs> through us. Uh, and this is the life that he wants us to live. Now, uh, who gets the glory? He does. That's the key point of this. When we're ministering, when it's the ministry of the Spirit working through us, it bring it's always going to bring Him glory. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's going to draw attention to us. Mm -hmm. It's something that's going to draw attention to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the more people are drawn to Jesus, the more they're going to they're going to to live and be, become edified in who they are, their identity. Now. Uh, look at look at Second Corinthians chapter three here. Second Corinthians chapter three. Last last time last week we looked at, and I, I'll just say this, and maybe for those that may be watching, uh, if you didn't if you didn't listen if you didn't weren't here last week or if you didn't listen last week there's there's kind of a progression of the foundation that we're laying in this ministry so I really encourage you to uh, go back and listen to the first part because there's going to be a progression in the spirit as we as we go along here and I think the foundation is important to to, to uh, continue to grow in this revelation of this ministry this wonderful ministry of the spirit uh, we looked at this last week in Second Corinthians chapter three. Uh, starting with verse 6, that we have been made sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Uh, verse 7, but if the ministry of death, and that's in your notes there, what, it, what, what Paul refers to in verse 7 as the ministry of death ministers what, according to verse 9? Let's look at it. Uh, Condemnation. So that the y'all y'all know this passage, but I think we're gonna we're gonna get something new, I think, this morning out of this. So that the children of Israel could not look steadily in the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How would the ministry of the Spirit? Here's that term, that's the title of what we're doing here. The ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious. If I say more glorious. More glorious. Uh, for if the ministry of condemnation had glory. The ministry of righteousness exceeds a little bit more in yeah, glory. Much, more. much, much more. more. I can, yeah, I can, I can see a lot of you. Y'all y'all, know this. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. Um, 
For what, for if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. So we can have a boldness about this glory because it actually excels. It actually accomplishes in our heart something that the old system could not. Now, uh, the ministry of the Spirit, verse 8, ministers what according to verse 9? What is the ministry of the Spirit minister? Well, righteousness. Right, righteousness. He will never speak to you about your condition. The Holy Spirit will always minister you to you about your position. Where, what is your position? In you're in Christ. Remember, you're co-crucified, co-buried, co-resurrected, co-ascended, co-seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. That is your position today, Amen. right now, Amen. as we speak. Or as I speak. <laughs> uh, now, referring to the chart, look on the back of your notes for just a minute. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not a graphic artist, so it's pretty graphic, but it's not art. It's not art. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've heard probably in the last six six or eight weeks, maybe a couple two or three months, I've heard probably four or five pastors talking about this this topic. This is going to be a little bit different than some of it I've heard. I know Jeremiah, we, Jeremiah, Jeremiah and I talked about this a little bit. Uh, but if you look on the left-hand side where it says old man, uh, the operating system for the old man was the law of sin and death. Now look at, look at uh, what I want you to note in the inner circle is the spirit. Then you have the soul, which is made up in the next layer, which is mind, will, and emotions. And then the body is in the outer ring. Under the old system, and this is, the, this is the glory that was passing away, this was the glory of the old system, uh, was that, notice that the, the spirit part is dead. There's no life there. Without being born again, there's no life in your, your spirit man is dead. Amen? So the only system that was that was in operation before before Jesus was born again, born from the dead, when he died and was born, no one was born again. He was the firstborn from the dead. Those that came out with him were the first fruits. So before before that, there was nothing that could. There was only one system that could try to bring a little glory into our life as as people with the spirit that's been it, it was that was dead and separated. Uh, and that was the, the law. The law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is part of the new operating system. But in the old system, the law of sin and death prevailed. And so the law was a way of trying to restrain our outer life, our outer person, from the outside in to try to bring some kind of a little bit of law and order, so to speak, to where, to where, to where, we, we, could, where we could dwell together with some sense of uh, uh, a better way to live with each other. But it didn't excel because what? What's the main reason it could not excel? Because so it was dependent on us. Dependent on us and no Holy Spirit. It, there's no Holy Spirit and it couldn't change the heart. It could make our it could make us by fear, you know, we've not been given a spirit of fear anymore, but this was a spirit of fear that would that would try to constrain that old man to come into some kind of conformity to live. So that they could, they could, they could, there could be some, some little bit of glory in the, in the, in the relation, inner relationships of the people that were there. But there was no possibility of life in it. It could never excel because it could never change the heart. So, uh, on the right hand side, the new man. When you are born again, you become a new creation in Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. A new creation, uh, and. Then you have a new system that, that's an operating system. It's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now notice that in the old man, you're living your life from the outside in. Everything, is, everything in your life is based upon your, your, your uh, circumstances, your experiences, what you see, what somebody tells you about you. What, some, what you might say about yourself based upon circumstances, based upon what somebody, what you may be thinking about yourself. That's the way we live. That's the, that's the only way that there was that from the outside in. And so notice that the new system is designed for, because now we have a spirit that's been, that's been born again. 
And the Spirit uh, contains all of the, the, the fullness of the Godhead. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. The person of Jesus Christ lives in you. That new birth is by incorruptible seed. It can't ever be changed. So now you have this, this new life in Christ that's inside you. And now the Holy Spirit, the operating system, the spirit of life, and that, that law is intended for us now to live not based upon the circumstances and what other people say to us and what we say about ourselves, but now what God says. That's, right. That's called truth. If you look under the, 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 uh, down at the, the, uh, at the bottom there, those aren't two fans, by the way. Uh, those are valves. Those are valves, yeah. Hey, Donna could actually see what that, yeah, was, what that was. Did, did that require a word of knowledge to do that? It did. I, see. I think Lord, so. Please tell me. This the ministry of the Spirit already operating. She's, she's discerned what that, that looks like, what that was there, by the Spirit. But um, the old identity, if you look at uh, below the two circles of charts there, you see the, 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 the rectangles put together there. The old identity... Uh, is a lie. The old identity or, or lies, now that you're in Christ, now that you have a new spirit, your body, soul, and spirit, you, now we have a new identity called truth. Uh, now, look, turn back over for just a minute. Uh, so compare the glory of the old covenant, this third section, and compare the glory of the old covenant with the glory of the new, the glory that excels. The old covenant, the glory was temporary, it was fading. It had no chance of excelling because you cannot have a good opinion of yourself. You could not develop um, no more consciousness of sin. In fact, it was ministering sin to you. It was ministering condemnation to you. Uh, whereas the new covenant excels in glory because now, what is glory again? The word in Greek is doxa, which is to have a good opinion resulting in praise and honor. You can have a good opinion of yourself now, not because of you, but because of Christ. Because he's ministering that truth from the inside out. And here is where the problem comes in and why we, even though we're born again, sometimes we don't, we're not experiencing the life that he wants us to have because we're not, we're not yielded to the ministry of the Spirit. We're still coming under the law of condemnation, the law of, of, of of the law, the condemnation of the law. Now, in 1 Thessalonians, uh, you don't have to go there. Uh, I just want you to fill in the blanks here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, Paul describes this as being made up of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. The spirit man inside you is, per is perfect. Let's look, at, let's look at some of the examples I wrote here as I was putting this together last night. Uh, as we realized last week, the new birth results in our becoming a new cre creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is what? He is a new creation. Most things have passed away. All. Oh, it's all. That's, what's, the Greek, what's the Greek word for all? All. all. Okay. <laughs> For the former things have passed away, all things have become new. So in your spirit, you're perfect. Look at, the, look at some of the other. Our, our new born-again spirit is created in righteousness and true holiness, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. True holiness is given to you as a gift. Uh, and it will manifest out of your life, not perfectly as long as we're in this body, but it will manifest as the spirit can minister in your life without hindrance, without us, us hindering it by allowing the old system to come back in. Uh, in uh, it has been perfected forever because of one offering. I put a, a capital O there on one because that offering was who? <coughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. By, for by one offering, he's perfected forever those that are being sanctified. Amen. The Holy Spirit set you apart. He's ministering to set you apart for himself, uh, to have life and have it more abundantly. He's, he's, he's wanting far more than what we know that we're aware of, but he's bringing it to us by revelation uh, more and more as we, as we, as we uh, preach the gospel and preach Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is getting more and more of a free reign to minister to us the truth 
which is our new identity. Amen? Now, uh, now look at 1 Peter chapter 1 for just a minute. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter one, verse nine. Receiving, uh, let, let's look at verse eight. Whom having not seen, has anybody seen Jesus in, in, the, in the flesh? Uh, I've not seen him in person. I know Paul did. Uh, so he could say that. I mean, he could, he could did, did Peter, had Peter seen Jesus? But he's talking to us here. So look at this. Uh, and this is what happens. This is the love that's shed abroad in our hearts by the, the Holy Spirit. When you become a believer in Christ, the, the Holy Spirit sheds abroad the love, this, this, this immeasurable, no, no height, width, depth, cannot be measured, His love, unconditional love for you. By which, to the level you receive that, you're able to love other people unconditionally. Only to the degree that you receive His love for you, uh, it's always going to be on that on that level. Uh, but you have it all, amen. It, it is it is a perfect love, and it will cast out what? Fear. Perfect fear. love will cast out fear. Now, in this passage here, he says, uh, uh, "Though now you have not seen Him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory." That's not you just saying, yay, that's the Holy Spirit in you, the joy uh, of your salvation, the Holy Spirit, that living part of the Trinity that now exists inside you, is expressing this joy. Uh, because when you believe, remember what we said, we did the gospel, we did the, the uh, altar call up front last week, uh, because it says, uh, with the heart one man believes unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth... Confession is made unto salvation. So when we hear the preaching of Jesus and we believe, our heart, the Holy Spirit transforms us into a new creation. And in that moment, that joy, and if you, if you remember, I mean, some people don't have an exact moment, but in, in that moment where you believe and you receive, there is something that happens, that there is a joy inexpressible that happens then, uh, that, that really is not explainable to your life before then. Right? Anybody ever had that experience? Uh, if you haven't, you, you're going to have it as the, minute, the ministry of the Spirit continues in your life. But it says, receiving uh, the end of your faith, the salvation of your spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that what it says? Yes. Remember, you're a body, soul, and spirit. You have a perfect salvation in here. But the end of faith should be, what is faith again? Conviction of truth, of what Jesus accomplished for you, in you, and through you. The end of that is the sal The end of faith should not be. It should be the, the salvation of our soul, where we start start being able to renew our mind to, to what has happened in here. That's when you begin to ex actually experience salvation, even though you even though you've had it. It's that it's the, in the soul realm where the battle is, and that's what the charts on the back are, are going to be about as we continue on. Everybody with me on this? Again, uh, based on the diagrams on the back, what is Peter revealing by this passage? Is is the in the bottom there where your soul is? Uh, the valve is, is as we as we focus on our old identity, our old man. Now, what what happened to our old man when we got born again? He was crucified with Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Paul said, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified. That's a permanent uh, uh, condition. I am crucified. Today, tomorrow, and forever, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's the new identity. That's the truth. That's, that's truth in your spirit that's trying to get that back to your soul. Now the old identity that the old man is dead uh, and, and uh, in fact 
gave you some, some kind of crazy illustrations here, but uh, when you hear something that's not true about you from yourself, like I said last week, uh, when I get free from me, I can be free from you, all right? Uh, but when I hear something that that either someone would say to me or I might say to myself, just I, I just heard, just, just yell out, lies, <laughs> lies. <laughs> It's not, is it true? If it's not true, then it's what? A lie. It's a lie. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I just feel like, one. yeah. Uh, <laughs> why not lies? <laughs> because, you know, if you want to be a, if you want to confess, it, confession again means to say what? The same thing God says. What is he saying about you? Righteous. You're righteous. You've been made perfect. All these things, you're, you're a new creation in Him. Uh, old things have passed away. Amen. And I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to be saying probably more of the word lies about what my own, my own uh, uh, mind tries to say about me. And I just had this, I had this image this morning as I was praying that we have, you remember how the little boy had his, his uh, finger stuck in the dike? Mm -hmm. There's people in this room this, today and I, I believe I, I was praying. I mean, I, I, I believe this morning that many of us, including myself, we've had our finger in that dike that's holding the spirit from flowing into our soul that's right. due to, due to uh, rejections, due to abuse, mm -hmm. due to a lot of things in our life that, uh, you know, that we all have a common history with. None of us have had a, has anybody had a perfect life in here? If you have, come on up here. <laughs> we need to let you. And, I, and all of those things in our life in that soul realm that are part of it. Lies. Yeah, lies. <laughs> you raise your hand, I'll say lies. <laughs> Liar. But all of those things that we've had, I feel like has been mm -hmm. the greatest hindrance to our salvation, the salvation of our soul. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. Amen? Amen? Amen. I, I, I can't tell you how, uh, and I feel like that the Holy Spirit wants this morning, as He, as he ministers to you, He's ministering, he's the, he's the, the ministry of the Spirit is going on in your life, even when you're asleep. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. From now through eternity, the Holy Spirit's ministering to you Amen. truth Amen. based upon the identity of who you are in Christ. Amen. Never about your condition. So, a hindrance, and I, I, you know, I, I just feel like that, you know, I know there's an excitement in your life about things happening, and I believe we're on that, we're in on that precipice of of. Of people realizing what we're talking about right here. That what's causing the, the, the spirit not to be able to flow. Remember what we said last week that he is, the, the Holy Spirit is a, a, a river, uh, a well that springs up out of our, out of our spirit. Um, he wants to spring. He wants to, he wants to, in fact, he doesn't want it to be a trickle. He doesn't want the valve open enough to where you can you know, get just a little drop out of it. He wants that floodgate to be open. And so I, I just felt this morning that by the Spirit, he's, he wants to help us. Yes. And, and the thing I think about is, especially since we've been, we've been hearing this, I think so many times it's not something that happened this year or last year. It's something that happened 20 years ago yeah, or 25 absolutely. years ago or 30 years ago that there's still, we still haven't come to that truth yet in ourselves about, yep, that, yeah. that's God, that doesn't matter, that's yeah. whatever. And, and because we haven't taken our finger out of the dike, mm -hmm. it keeps cycling and cycling and mm -hmm. cycling. The things in our life, the same things going on and on and on uh, because of the false identity. Because the enemy wants you to believe you're that person. That you're still that person who made that mistake 20 years ago, and then you made it again 15 years ago, and then you made it again yesterday, right? Right. He wants you. He wants you to make. He wants to make you believe that you're still. That's still your identity. 
whatever that false identity. Remember what are you supposed to say? Lies. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> because if we don't, if we don't let the Holy Spirit help us take that finger out of that dike, see what he wants is the floodgate to open. And once that, if, 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 if that little boy took his finger out of the dike, what was going to happen? The dam was going to break, right? It was all, I'm not, maybe I've got the wrong story. But anyways, <laughs> uh, a dam, once it, once it begins to, uh, the, pressure. the yeah. pressure is so great. And I'm telling you, the, Holy, the, the pressure of the Holy Spirit towards you is so great, so awesome, so glorious, uh, so powerful. Uh, we're going to see that in just a minute. He, he wants that free flow in our, in our life. And I, and I know that he's been dealing with me. I was talking, we, we sat for like four hours yesterday talking about this. Uh, but uh, I, the Holy Spirit's beginning as I've been praying, some praying some of the Spirit, he's been giving me these, I, these strongholds. See, it, it's the, now I'm going to go off on a tangent here. <laughs> Is this okay? Yes. Uh, Turn to 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 10 for just a second. This is one little, one little, can I go on one rabbit trail? Okay. Maybe, how about two? No. I'll stay with, I'll stay with one. It's not in your notes, but write this down because this is a real, I, I, Holy Spirit reminded me this morning of it. But, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse 3. For we... For though we walk in the flesh, does anybody, I don't think anybody's in here that's not walking in the flesh, right? We do not war according to the flesh. Now, how, the war in the spirit realm is what? It's one. We have 100% victory in our heart, in our spirit. The, the, we're, we're starting from victory. We're not trying to get to victory, right? The new life in Christ starts with complete and total and utter victory. Is that the wind of the Holy Spirit? Is that? What's it? <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's a, it sounded like a rushing mighty wind there for a second. We'll take that too, right? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we don't war against the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. This is not from the outside in. You see, this is from the inside out because salvation of our souls is hanging in the balance. It's not salvation in your spirit. It's in your soul. I want to live. I want to, be, I want to have salvation in my, in my mind, will, and emotions uh, for pulling down strongholds. And this is what I'm talking about. A stronghold is a false, is a, is, is a, bull, is a lie that you believe to be true. And it has power in your life so long as you have if you believe that way. As long as you believe that lie, there's a stronghold of, that, that the, the Holy Spirit wants to break, to break down. Uh, uh, it's uh, pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God? It's the per perfect work that Christ accomplished and finished in you. He lives in you. You've been perfected forever. You're, so that's the that's the the thought begins to exalt itself against that knowledge. See, Amen. And so it's so it's it, casting down those arguments is what is what we're doing by the ministry of the Spirit, bringing every thought ca into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Again, it's not my obedience; it's His be obedience that won my victory. So He wants them. He wants it to be about you. Let's say it's it's all about Him. It's all about him. Amen? Uh, now, uh, got just a few more minutes here. Uh, so that valve, that, that, that finger that's in that dike, I believe, I believe today there's some people there. And I mean, as I was praying, hearts were people's, you know, I, as, you know, as pastors, uh, Deborah and I, we, we, we hear, you know, we hear, you know, there's lots of things happening uh, in, uh, in our lives and the lives of our kids and the lives of all these things that want to bring uh, destruction to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was thinking about some things in my, in my life that I feel it, it, that still have had 
some strongholds in the way I think about myself. And I, and I realize that it's only by the ministry of the Spirit that, I'm going, that, that can wash all that out of my life, but I've got to take the finger out of the dike. And I'm telling you, some of y'all today, and, and, or there may be people you know or, or, or with that, that you're ministering to, that, you, that will, if you can help them remove that stronghold in the way they think, the Holy Spirit wants to open a floodgate into their life and minister life to them and bring salvation to their souls. The, the, they already have it here. He wants to bring it to them here. And that will work out into their body as well. So you can have perfect perfect work done in your spirit, but if you have a stronghold that you're putting your finger in to keep the flow of the spirit to minister to you, it, call, it, it can even affect your body. It can even affect your physical body. Uh, you know, you have all the joy of the Lord in your spirit man that you're ever going to have. You're never going to have more joy than you have right now. <laughs> That's how I feel about that sometimes. <laughs> You know, and when we preach, when we preach the law, you know, we preach to ourselves, and we should put, our, put ourselves back under the ministry of condemnation. See, the joy goes away from because it's outside living from to the to the inside. But the joy, that complete joy we have on the inside, is you're never going to have more. So the more we keep the finger in the dike, the, the more we're impeding that joy in our life. I'm telling you, the ministry of the Spirit is glorious. And it's going, to, it's going to get more glorious now that we understand it and built on that, on that platform of, of our perfect work, the perfect new creation that we are. That's the reason I couldn't embrace it in the past. It's because I didn't know about the, about the completion of what I had on the inside. Mm -hmm. I was somehow trying to bring perfection from the outside in mm -hmm. instead of knowing I already have it from the inside out. Amen? Let's finish up here. Uh, <clears throat> Go to, go to Romans chapter 8. We're going we're gonna to actually stop here in just a minute because I'm not going to be able to finish all of this. But we're going to, I'm glad this is a, a, not one message, if this is an ongoing message. Uh, I just wanted to lay it a little more a foundation because I don't ever really finish, do I? I just quit. Uh, I, I don't ever finish, I just quit every week. So uh, there is no finish to this. Amen. It's a finished work that we'll never, we'll never completely Amen. understand, but the Holy Spirit's bringing us more and more. Romans chapter 8. Uh, there's no greater... Do this just for... Because we're going to spend a lot of time in Romans 8 uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming weeks. And I believe this is going to really minister to you because... Re circle in your Bible if you have one that you write in. I, if you don't have one, I suggest, you know, the technology is great, but circle every time you see the word spirit capitalized in Romans 8. Uh, there, I, I counted in my, in the New King James Version, there's 19 times that the spirit, capital S, is mentioned in this one chapter. But see, we live, we've been living our life in some ways as a born again person out of, out of Romans chapter 7. Mm -hmm which is Paul talking about his life under the law and saying at the end of it, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, there's now no condemnation of them that are in Christ. It goes from the, from the natural to the spiritual. This is the ministry of the Spirit in, in chapter 8. So, um, for the law of the Spirit of life, look at verse 2 says, for the, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The Spirit works from the inside out. Walter was talking to me this morning. He, he always comes early and uh, he was saying this very same thing. Uh, and I told him, I, hey, you're telling me this is what we're going to talk about. The law from the outside in. Verse 9. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Everybody say, I'm not in the flesh. I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the spirit. Can I get a can I get a good amen? Amen. All right. I, I am I'm not in the flesh. Uh, Hallelujah. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 states, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. We are one spirit with the Lord. Is that good news? Yes. What does the Spirit do according to Romans 8, verse 11? What does he do? 
But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Now what's in between your body and your spirit? Your soul. Take the finger out. Take the finger out of the dike. Because he wants to minister life to hear and to hear. And I'm telling you, I've had, this has been impeded in my life, greatly impeded. Uh, and wondering why. You know, why is this not, why is this not happening in a, in a way that, that I see in Scripture it's supposed to happen? Well, the, the, the battleground is in the mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so the last section of your notes, I'm going to finish this. If you've got, can you give me two minutes? Four. Four? <laughs> You're so generous. <laughs> She's going to give me four minutes. Yes. Well, Mark's not going to give me that much. Uh, so, all that we've been saying, where is the battleground? The mind. Therefore, the battleground is in the mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? Renewing of your spirit. Right? Is that what it says? Is there anything in your spirit that needs to be renewed? No. No. The renewal has to happen in your mind. That's the battleground. That's the only thing that's impeding the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Spirit, in through your mind and to your body. And then through your through you to someone else. I'm telling you, these, these strongholds will, will cause a problem in your ability to minister because you you're broken down in your own thinking. But you should be yelling. Lies. 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 There you go. <laughs> uh, but he wants to he wants to break those lies out of your life. So that there can be a free flow. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your flesh. Mind. Mind. Your mind. It's your mind. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Therefore gird up the loins of your mind. mind. Be sober and rest your hope mostly fully, fully upon what? Grace. The grace of God that's to be brought to us at the revelation. The more revelation we have of Jesus, the more we can rest our hope. He wants us to have the, 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 the key to the new covenant is what? It's not work. It's rest. rest. It's rest. And it's hard to have rest uh, in your mind if, you've got, if, you're, if you're blocking through, through these lies, these strongholds coming from the outside. Giving us a false identity. Uh, now it says, let's let's look at this last one, Met, uh, and I want you to meditate this week on this. Second Corinthians chapter three. How do I stand, uh, Donna? If I got am I, okay. minute three. Yeah, second, four minutes left. <laughs> second Corinthians chapter three. <laughs> second Corinthians chapter three. But we all, with unveiled face, when your life is, when you're, when you're living by the law of sin and death, and you're, and you're allowing the enemy to, to bring lies back through from the outside in, it, it causes a veil in your life that, that keeps you from seeing as clearly. Uh, Paul had it back, to, back when he was, when, he was uh, when Ananias came to lay hands on him that he might receive the Spirit. It was like a, the veil that was over him was the law. The veil that's over our, our, our clarity and vision is that old situation coming out of the law. And he wants to take that away. Again, uh, it says, uh, but we with, with unveiled face, and the, and the ministry of the Spirit is to unveil. The, we, have, we have access into the Holy of Holies by in a new and living way through the torn veil of what? His flesh. Jesus' flesh was torn so you could have access into, into the throne of grace where you can obtain what? Mercy, Mercy and find grace uh, in time of need. Um, beholding, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by your own efforts. <laughs> what does it say? The by the Spirit. All he wants us to do is take our finger out of that, out of that dike. He wants to, he wants us to, to, to uh, cause, uh, to allow the, the freedom of the Holy Spirit to minister, the ministry of the Spirit to become more and more uh, evident to us. Uh, that's the, that's the stronghold.
Amen? Mm -hmm. So this week, as you as continue to behold Him, continue beholding Him this week. The ministry of the Spirit, we're going to do part three. We're going to get into a lot more in Romans chapter 8. A lot of the things that that, uh, that have to do with prayer, uh, have to do with identity, sonship, all those things. This is an amazing chapter. Romans 8 is an amazing. If you want to, if you want to read and, and pray uh, about, you know, revelation from this, uh, I believe that I believe in the coming weeks that He's going to wake up a lot of things in our heart that have been uh, that have, have been darkened by uh, misunderstanding, not understanding our identity, not understanding what the ministry of the Spirit is really all about. Amen. Amen. He wants to give us life. Yes. Full, full expression. He wants full expression into your right. soul. So and you think about that, that God is Jesus, you know, they're all inside yeah. of me. Absolutely. And, and he said every every thought, every decision, every place you go, he's your comforter, and your helper to help you do whatever, wherever, everything that comes out of your mouth, everything you do, he's, he's right there to help Amen. you. Amen. I, I, saw, I saw the illustration when you were talking. When you get up in the, in the morning and look in the mirror, I'll say, Oh man! <laughs> Look in that mirror and say, "God lives in that person." That's right. <laughs> God lives in that man, that man, that woman. God lives in that person. Yeah. Changes the whole. It changes everything. And that's that's the realization. That's the ministry of the Spirit he wants. Go ahead. He's right, right there. No, he's, he's right there absolutely. every day, all day. We, yeah. we just need to use him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> there's so he's much. Like, that, there's so much. Look, there's so much. Right. Uh, we, we, you know, we. There's so much limitations that we have put on ourselves that's in that realm of the soul. Just take the out. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm telling you, I, I believe that's going to happen this week. I believe there's some things that have been, that in my life I know I've clogged some things up in the ministry of the Spirit. And I believe he wants that. He wants us to. to and there's people that you know that aren't here today. Yeah. Getting the witnesses. Uh, that, that, that this message will help. This message will help them because that's what's impeding them having what Paul, what Peter called salvation of their soul. He wants the, he wants our soul uh, to live in, in the same way that our spirit is alive. Amen. And then through our, through our body and then out of us. Uh, we I want is anybody y'all want to be free to minister the spirit to others? That's right. We have to be free to let the spirit minister to us. It can't happen in the other way. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed week, and we'll we'll continue.